Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the HP Omen Vector, a wireless gaming mouse from HP, which will set you back around £90 or $90. It's an interesting gaming mouse from HP with a number of nice highlights to it that includes, but is not limited to, six programmable buttons, a really nice ergonomic design with some rough and delightful textured grips on either side, a large and comfortable fit in the hand, some fairly large and easy to access side buttons, as you can see here, a very nice textured mouse wheel that I'll show you a close up of in a second, and some other interesting things that include a ridiculous battery life. This mouse has a battery life of up to 180 hours is the claim. And I must say that during testing, I have rarely had to plug it in. It has really just kept going and going, which is fantastic. Also, it has turbo charge mode because of that USB-C port that you can see there. If you plug that in, you can get an hour of battery life in just 30 seconds is the claim, which is pretty impressive. As I said, I've not had to use it plugged in very much at all during my testing period. So it's been really good in battery life department. I was really impressed by that. And I've got some battery life saving settings within the HP Omen software that I'll show you later on in this video. Now it's a wireless mouse, but it also has a one millisecond polling rate. And they claim that it's ultra low latency because of it. It's also got an eSports grade PixArt PAW3335 wireless sensor in it, and it goes up to 16,000 DPI. It does, however, weigh over 100 grams, so it's not particularly lightweight, but I didn't feel like it was terribly heavy. It's 103 grams, so it's not massively heavy. I've seen heavier mice, but I've certainly seen lighter ones. Now it has a 40G max acceleration, 400 IPS, and it also has an adjustable liftoff distance. It's designed with an ergonomic style that will fit with palm or claw grips, but it's very much a right-handed gaming mouse, as you can see, as the shape to it. Now, it's other interesting and nice little highlights include a little dock for the wireless dongle, so when you're not using it, you can easily plug that in. You'll also note underneath there's a switch to turn it on and off. It has multiple PCFE feet and they're fairly smooth. I've actually found that it glides around the desk quite nicely despite the weight of it. And so it's, what you can see basically immediately is quite a nice design. Now it does verge on being a bit larger. So we'll talk a bit more about that later on. And it's a good fit for my hand. I've actually found it very comfortable to use thanks to that slight thumb rest that you can see on the side and the shape and size of it. So it's been very nice in that department. In the box, you get a braided USB-C cable and this adapter, which you can plug into, and then you can plug the wireless dongle in, which is basically an extension cable. So you plug the cable into your PC, and then you can put that on your desk, and then you've got easy access to either plug your mouse in when you need to charge it, or just extend the range of the wireless if necessary, and have easy access, and not have to plug in the dongle and the cable and faff around with that. So it's just a convenience thing. As I've said, though, really need to plug this in, which is great, because wireless is obviously fantastic for not having cables tugging at you constantly but I've certainly not noticed any problems with latency delay while gaming so I've not seen an issue with the response of it. It's been accurate and fun to use for gaming and very nice indeed in terms of that response. Connection has also been solid. I've not had any problems with this dongle or the connection to my PC. No issues there. Now at this price it would be nice to see a Bluetooth connection as well. The Steel Series Aerox 3 that I reviewed recently, for example, is roughly a similar price point, but that has wireless and Bluetooth, whereas this one doesn't, which is a shame. If you want to connect it to other devices, that one has a lot more connectivity. But the HPM Vector is a slightly nicer ergonomic design, thanks to that side thumb rest, larger overall fit in the hand. It's a bit more comfortable, I feel. It clicks also fairly nice. It's got a nice response to it. It doesn't feel too mushy. They're Omron switches. Now, one thing that I will note that I'm going to be quiet for right now is just the sheer volume of that mouse wheel. I found it incredibly frustrating. It's very, very noisy, obnoxiously noisy, in fact. And that has been the main annoyance for me while using this mouse is just how loud the mouse wheel is compared to the other buttons. It also sounds, as you can hear, a bit hollow in the hand when you're clicking the buttons, which might be another downside. Uh, but one thing I do like is that DPI button changes the RGB lighting on the wheel to let you know which zone of RGB lighting you're in. So what the levels you've set, what level you're switching to. So that's pretty good. At a glance, you can easily see that. 
nice little touch. I also like the little design aesthetic on that mouse wheel and the overall look and feel of it is also very nice. Now, when you go into the HP Omen software, which I'll show you in a little while, you can customize the DPI levels, change the polling rate, adjust the buttons as well. It has, as I said, six programmable buttons. Obviously, you've got the DPI button, the main buttons, the mouse wheel, and the side buttons. So not a mass of buttons, but they are easy access. One of the things I liked about that is that side thumb buttons are nice and large, especially the front ones, so they're easy to press and easy to feel. But what you will notice is they've got a very smooth, shiny texture to them. So I think if you had a particularly greasy or sweaty hand, you might find your fingers slipping off. And the difference between them is actually interesting because that side grip is quite textured and rough, but the buttons themselves are very smooth. So now this means that you can easily feel those buttons and the difference between where you put your thumb. So an easy adjustment between the two, but it's quite a vast difference and a bit of a odd one because it means obviously you've gone from a really rough textured grip holding onto it, then buttons that your thumb could potentially slip off. Minor points in otherwise fantastic mouse setup really have enjoyed using this mouse but i'm not sure i could recommend it based on that mouse wheel if you're not bothered by the sound of a loud mouse wheel it's not going to be a problem but i found it very frustrating that is however only a very small gripe in what has otherwise been a really nice mouse i was really surprised by it i'll be honest because when i first got it out of the box i wasn't blown away by it it's not particularly snazzy looking it's a little bit heavier than the mice i've been using recently it doesn't seem to have all the bells and whistles and yet it manages to be a satisfying mouse with a nice feel to it and great for gaming too, which is obviously very important. That insane battery life is also very welcome. There's nothing worse than to plug in your mouse regularly for a charge. However, USB-C cable does make that a bit easier. But one thing that I will note is that plugging in the USB-C cable is a bit of a faff. I didn't find it particularly easy. I don't know why the cable itself has got a sort of chunky end on it and the entry point at the front isn't quite large enough so it's a bit of a fiddle it should just be able to just snap in and push in a USB-C cable that is after all the point and then they're a lot easier to put in either way around and you can put it in either way around but it just took a little bit of faffing which I feel like it really shouldn't so a couple of very small negatives in an otherwise enjoyable mouse, which has been fun to use. Now, I wouldn't usually look at HP peripherals because I don't really think of them as a gaming company. They're more, you know, obviously you've got the Omen laptops and stuff and parts and PCs, but for mice, I wouldn't necessarily think about them. But they've just recently purchased HyperX, so things should change in the future. Now, to show you the size, I've measured my hand. You can see on around seven to eight inches, depending on how you measure and what you're using. And this is how it looks in my hand. And as I said, I feel like it verges on being larger than other mice I've tested recently. And I found it very comfortable to use. It's a good fit. It's a nice large fit. A thumb rest is perfect for covering the desk and stopping me rubbing my hand on the desk too. So it's been really nice. Now I'm going to dive into the HP Gaming Hub software and show you how you can customize the mouse there. And here we are within the HP Omen Gaming Hub, which you can access from the Microsoft Store within Windows. And you can see that you then have access to the HP Omen Vector Wireless Mouse here. And notice that immediately you're taken to the power section first of all, and you can see the charge level is currently at 20%, which is interesting and useful because you can see here we've got a power saving mode, which if you click on it will tell you that you can dim the LED lights when the device is low on battery and turn off the logo as well. However, it's worth noting that this is already on and at 20% my lights are still in use, which shows that that isn't counted as low. So it might look like it's low here, but it's actually still gonna go for quite a while yet. In the lighting section, you can customize the two lighting zones and you have obviously the standard breathing color cycle and blinking, and you can change the speed and you can choose between various different color schemes. You can choose a static color if you prefer, set one, and you can set them in the zones. As you can see, you can do zone one and zone two separately. So you could choose to have a different color on the mouse wheel, or you can apply it to both of them, or you can have that animation. And as I said, the DPI mode on the mouse wheel is also really neat. So when you press that DPI button, it'll change color really easily too, and let you know what's happening. I'm actually gonna quickly show that. So you can see that in here. Now as standard, it's set to have four DPI levels. So it's set like, this 
Actually, it might be three. But when you load up the software, you have the default levels set. And then you can switch between them by just pressing the button. And you see when I press the button on my mouse, it changes between those. But what's interesting is that you can not only customize those levels, but they're assigned a color. And so you can easily see at a glance what level you're on. You can also open it up so you've got eight different levels between the minimum of 100 DPI and the maximum of 16,000. Obviously, 16,000 is insane. Other things you might enjoy access to is the polling rate, which is set to 1,000 hertz as default, which means that you minimize your latency. The liftoff distance you can adjust between low and high, although it doesn't tell you what the difference is in the actual liftoff distance. But I can tell you that high is not very high at all. It's a very small distance off the desk still, so don't think you're going to be suddenly able to hold it feet above your desk and find it working there. Acceleration is the cursor speed, and you can obviously that's set to five as default, and you can change that, and you can change angle snapping as well. And then button setup, you can obviously customize those buttons as I was saying. Mouse wheel in, left and right mouse click. DPI button can be changed to something else. If you don't want it to DPI button, and then you can change the settings here too. And you can choose from a number of different things. You can customize your own macros. So you can set up a keystroke, you can do multi key recording, so you can record one here, and set it up to launch an application and other things, you can do all that. You can choose from media playback buttons, for example, so you could get it so it plays music on the side buttons. You can choose other actions, or you can even assign like letters on your keyboards and things like that, so you can customize plenty of different levels here. As you can see, there's no profiles though, so you can't really switch between the profiles on the mouse and have different setups for different things, which is possibly a downside to it. Let's go through the setup process. Let's just mark this as A. So now my side thumb button is just going to type the letter A. It's doing. So it's fairly straightforward to change. Another thing is that you can go into the update section and you can update your firmware if necessary. So a fairly easy to use bit of kit there and the software isn't too shabby either. You've got some nice customization options, fairly easy to tweak and adjust with ease. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and useful, as well as these other videos, and click that join button to find out the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.